Hey, welcome to match four. Or maybe is it five? I'm not sure. These are starting to blend together to me. Uh, hopefully there's some value to be gained out of watching this many uh, matches of affinity over and over again. Um, anyways, this hand is amazing. Um, well, is it amazing or just good? I get to play... If I draw a land in the first two turns, then I get to play two Steel Overseers on turn two. So I'm playing the Springleaf Drum over the Vault Scourge to keep myself to give myself the out of casting uh, two Steel Overseers if I draw a land. His start looks to be pretty good with that plating. But, um... Yeah, he's going to have to try to grind me out with the plating. I don't think he's going to have another hope beyond that. Let's see, if he has a Galvanic Blast... So if he... Animate Nexus... Equip Attack... And has a Galvanic Blast... Then tapping the Ink Moth kills me. Or, or ta tapping out in such a way that I don't keep up an Ink Moth blocker. The best thing I can draw is an Ornithopter, so that I have a flying blocker. It's going to be big enough to trade with any of his creatures. Certainly, Cranial Plating is the great equalizer when um, one player has two Steel Overseers in play. The best thing about Steel Overseers is they make it really, really hard for one player to, tra to trade... For, for the person against the Steel Overseers to trade one for one with the person who has the Steel Overseers. Because your creatures just get too big for that to happen. Cranial Plating allows you to continue to trade one for one, so it doesn't matter that your creatures are smaller because they're still trading off efficiently. Interesting, going all in now is a risky play. It looks like he's holding up Galvanic Blast. So, here I have to play a gal around Galvanic Blast. He's... <laughs> yes, exactly. So, if he has a Blast, or draws a Blast, and I leave up only Ink Moth Nexus, I die. So 
So I cannot play. I cannot afford to play Master. Um, I cannot afford to play Master of Ethereum. By the way, everything he says right here is spot on. Um, I am also not able to afford to activate the Steel Overseers to pump this Memnite, since I don't want to use the Drum mana, because I don't have tapped creatures, untapped creatures that I want to tap. So now he blasts this. No? Okay, well then. So I'm not blocking with the Vault Scourge because if he Galvanic, for some reason, decides to Galvanic Blast this uh, and had it up all along, then uh, the Vault Scourge would kind of just like die for free for no reason because this is already being blocked. By blocking just like this, I also keep the Vault Scourge um, relatively, uh, I, I also, I, I'm not actually losing value on the chump block because the infect damage stays, so this is going to turn into a, um, you know, a, a essentially a 2-2. Two -two. And because, I believe because he didn't have the blast, I'm probably going to win. Well, actually, no. Because he didn't have last, I'm definitely going to win, but... Hey. Yeah, him blasting the Scourge is definitely a good play right here. And now that I don't have any flying blockers, I just have to race. Or, er, uh, yeah, I just have to race as fast as I can. So put two more counters on, and then I'm going to start attacking with everything next turn, and that should be lethal. Or close to it. And so, had he blasted my ink, so had he blasted the ink moth, he would have won because um, I don't have another flyer here. So the fact that my ink moth got to block instead of my Volscourge means that his ink moth is small enough that he can't attack me for lethal. Mm. So if he hadn't clicked through the step on Magic Online, he would have won this game. brutal. Uh, by the way, in case any of the people watching, um, yes, yes, in case any of the people watching think that my opponent is not good, the last time I played against him, you mean, I mean, aside from all of these matches that I just recorded, um, he, he, I, I ran into him in a queue and he, he crushed me. So, I'm just drawing better than he is. That's that's all it's coming down to. I 
I was actually trying to record the, um... I had been trying to record at that point in time. I thought I had been recording the, the match where he crushed me, except for some reason uh, a new patch to the recording software I use had screwed it up. So I needed to uninstall and reinstall my recording software <laughs> to get it to work. And I hadn't noticed until after the match was done that uh, the recorder hadn't been on. All right, this hand's good. It can't cast the master, but uh, it has... Jar, a plating, a scourge, galvanic blast. You know, all of the components that you need to make a hand, you know, functional. And he mulligans to six. Ugh. So very lucky I am. Do I attack? He's going. If he equips, he's equipping to the signal pest. So I can trade Vault Scourge for signal pest. I don't like that trade, so I'm going to attack. I guess I could trade Drum for signal pest. I still don't like it. And although I don't get in for damage, I do gain one life. So I wasn't going to block either of his creatures. Ergo, worth it to attack. So I need to dodge the uh, gear per aether grid right here. If he has a grid and I will be very unhappy. Alright, just another signal post. Okay. to trade off the welding jar for the uh, ornithopter here. Then I get to hold up galvanic blast. Which seems fine. Also, I'm not unhappy to just trade a Blink Moth Nexus for the Signal Pests. I've got enough Nexuses that I don't feel like I'm particularly in need of them. And he's got a Cranial Plating. He has a Galvanic Blast here, that's fine, I take some damage, but ultimately it's not a big deal. And if he doesn't have a Galvanic Blast, then I get to trade Blink Moth for the Signal Pest that has the Cranial Plating on it, which is also fine because I have a bunch of uh, Nexi and don't have the mana to use them all. 
So it does appear that he's got a bunch of cards stuck in his hand. Um, here, because I do the second plating, I'm just going to play and equip plating. Get a whole bunch of damage in. I think he's got a Galvanic Blast. The reason I think he has a Galvanic Blast is because he left up a mana and did not equip to his Signal Pest. But if I was going to deploy the plating... He can't tap out here. He has to grudge. Oh. Well, now he's just dead. Oh, I guess he's oh, he's hoping that I don't have the extra land to play to equip. Also, because I probably do it anyways. Oh wait, I miscounted. I only have nine artifacts. All right, he has to. Oh, well, he has to do pretty good here. Well, there's a blank moth. So I win if I draw untapped land. So blast or grudge beats me. Can I play around that? I can play around Blast. Yeah, I can play around Blast by, um... I play around Blast by attacking with only one of these, and then blasting the Ink Moth when it animates. And then he... Then if he blasts in risk, So if he has no removal, I just win. Right? Because I animate Ink Moth, attack, and then if he animates this and I blast it, then he needs a removal to, to not lose. If he has that blast, then I have blasted this, tapped two lands, and an, uh, including a nexus, so I have one untapped mana, which I use to play the signal pest, which can chump the master next turn, which means he'll need a second half of a grudge or another flying removal, flyer or removal spell for the next turn to not to to um, to not die. So the best play here is to animate an Ink Moth, attack, blast the Blink Moth when it animates, and get there. All right. Ooh, 